okay, you decide you want to build a website, and you want to make that website a Joomla website or a WordPress website, or let's say even a Drupal website. So you want to build a website using a content management system. So what are you going to need? Well, first of all, you're going to need a web server. Now, in my class, we use the Apache web server. Apache is an open source um, project, and it's freely downloadable. And it's also the most prevalent web server on the internet today. So you're going to need a web server. Once you have a web server, you're going to need to have a directory on that web server where you're going to put your files, your websites, are going to go into your web directory. And usually, each one of your websites will have its own folder inside your web directory. So you can see here I put website 1, website 2, website 3, and each one is a folder in my web directory on a web server. Okay? And inside each one of these folders, in the old days, what you would find is you would find an index.html page if it's an Apache web server, and the index.html page is your home page on each one of, let's say, your websites, right? And you might find some other things on there, like some image files, image1.jpg, or you know, you might have page2.html, etc., right? So this is the old days. Now, for a content management system, though, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download, let's say, Joomla or WordPress, or both, and you, when you download them from their websites at joomla.org or wordpress.org, they're going to be in a zipped format, a compressed zip format. So you can see here I've got Joomla 2.5, this is the latest version, zipped, and I also like Joomla 1.5, so I've downloaded that too, dot .zip, and I've also downloaded, let's say, the latest version of wordpress.zip as well. So I've got these zipped folders, right? So now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to unzip these folders and then put the contents of the folders into our prospective websites. And you can see here now that there's going to be a ton of folders inside there now. And you can see the index.html page is changed to this index.php page. Now this isn't exactly what's going to be in the folder, obviously, but I wanted to point out that the Joomla and the WordPress websites use PHP as a predominantly scripting and uh, website creation force inside your websites. So now you've done that. So you've downloaded, uh, let's say, Joomla and WordPress. You've unzipped them, and then you've uploaded those files or placed those files inside the prospective folders. All right, what else? So not only do you have to download, let's say, Joomla and WordPress, and get those files that are inside each one into these prospective folders, you're also going to need to make sure that your web server is running PHP. Uh, PHP is a programming language, a scripting language, that is used to generate web pages, and the pages need to be interpreted at the web server. So the web server that you use has to have PHP installed in it. Also, you're going to need to make sure that this web server also has access to a MySQL server. Now, a MySQL server is a database server that can serve multiple databases. And you're going to need this because content management system websites, or websites that are built with content management systems, like Joomla or WordPress, use a database to populate content on the web pages. So for each website that you create, you can see here website 1, website 2, website 3, there's going to need to be a corresponding database. And you can see here I've put site 1 underscore database, site 2 underscore db for database, and site 3 underscore db for another database. So each website will have its own corresponding database. And this is pretty much what you're going to need if you want to develop a content management system built website. Now. Now, if we look at this next slide, you can see now, you can do this, you can develop these websites on a public web server. You can see here I've put purchase a shared web hosting account. This is what you would do typically, is go out and purchase yourself a shared web hosting account, a domain name, and you need to make sure that this web host that you've purchased your account with 
has, let's say, PHP installed on the web server, and there's also, you're going to need access to a MySQL server because you're going to need to be able to create databases on that server. Or another option is you can develop on your home computer, let's say on your laptop or your desktop computer, if on your computer you can install Apache Web Server, PHP, and the MySQL server, right? So this option is good because it's a great option because if you have a public web hosting account, it's publicly available, and when your site's done, it's easy to go live right away because all of your files and your site are already on the web host, on the internet. And this option, doing it at home on your home computer, is nice because you can develop your website privately on your local computer, which is a very safe test environment, and you don't have to worry about the site being public before it's time. And you can also test out a lot of things, try out a lot of things, and it's nice for developing. So in my class, we like to, I like to have the students start off by developing locally. So if you're going to develop locally, you're going to need to install Apache, MySQL, and PHP. Now there's two products out there that are um, free to download. One is WAMP Server 2, which if you download it, it will install all these things automatically on your system in a very easy way. And XAMP from ApacheFriends.org, and they also have a great product which will install all of these things as well. Now, what does this stand for? WAMP, that's Windows, Apache, MySQL, PHP. There's other products, let's say like a MAMP product, which would be Mac, Apache, MySQL, and PHP, or LAMP, Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. Now, XAMP, this works across a lot of platforms, and it stands for the same thing, though. Apache, MySQL, PHP, and the next P, I believe, stands also for PHP My Admin, which is an administrative PHP front end for creating your databases. Either way, these are good products to use. Now, what if you said, you know what, I don't want to develop locally and I just want to develop publicly. Well, you're going to need to get a web host. Now, there's some big players out there, as you know, GoDaddy, you've probably heard of them before, Bluehost, Dreamhost, those are some big players. I personally like to use Penguin Web Hosting. Uh, they're a smaller company, and in the web hosting world, bigger is not always better. I'll just put it that way. Anyway, this should help you to get started and give you a sense of what you're going to be doing. 